Hello everyone, this video is going to be about setting up a bare minimum Mr. FPGA setup. Doing this will help you take your time in building a full setup. Or depending on the cores you use, you may end up saying to yourself that you don't need a full setup. Okay, let's talk about the things you need. You will need the DE10 Nano. This is what powers the Mr. FPGA project and contains the FPGA chip that will run the cores. When you buy a DE10 Nano, it will be housed in some acrylic for protection. I took this one out of a full Mr. FPGA build I have, and I don't know where I put the acrylic. So you get to see this bare board. A heatsink is also recommended. You'll need a micro SD card, but you will most likely want one larger than the included 8GB one. I would say to get at least 128GB. I personally stick more to the games in the 16-bit generation and before, but CD-ROM games and computer hard drive images can easily put you way past 100GB. If you need help to install the Mr. FPGA software to the SD card, check out my video describing how to do that. A micro USB to USB-A adapter is also needed. You can either get one like this small adapter here, or you can get a cable that extends out. I feel the cable is better because depending on what you connect to it, there might be some undue force applied to the micro USB port. I can't find my cable, so I'll be using this adapter for this video. A USB hub is highly recommended. You'll be connecting it to the micro USB adapter, and this will allow you to connect multiple controllers, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongles, and more, all at the same time. If you plan to attach high power devices like an external hard drive, then you will want a powered USB hub. But for this bare minimum setup, a hard drive is not needed. And right before uploading this video, I found out about this hub that connects through micro USB. So you won't need a separate hub and a micro USB to USB A adapter. To play your games, you'll need game pads that connect through USB. You can use Bluetooth, but then a USB dongle will be required. We are trying to keep this setup at a minimum. A USB keyboard is also needed. This is necessary for the initial setup and for any computer cores you may want to use. A mouse will also be helpful for some computer cores. And while it's not required for the bare minimum, in order to play most games, you will need an SD RAM module. You will be very limited in what you can do if you do not have this module. So I consider a RAM module a requirement. 128 megabytes is the recommended size. And there are instances that you may need two RAM modules, but those are rare. I will cover more info on that later in the video. So just worry about getting only one RAM module. I provided links in the description on where to obtain these items. Connecting everything is simple. Make sure the DE10 Nano is unplugged from its power source. Then on the DE10 Nano, attach the heatsink to the FPGA chip. Ignore the different heatsinks that I'm using in other clips. You'll be fine using either one. Now make sure these switches on the DE10 Nano are all in the position that are away from the FPGA chip. You can see that they are closer to these GPIO pins. You want to insert the SD card with the Mr. Software installed on it. Remember, if you don't know how to install the software, check out my video that shows you how. Now insert the RAM modules on the GPIO pins that are on the opposite side of the network port. Make sure the side of the module that says this side facing outwards is facing away from the DE10 Nano. Then connect the USB hub to the micro USB adapter. And the micro USB adapter to the micro USB port of the DE10 Nano. Plug in the keyboard and any USB controllers you have to the hub. Now use an ACMI cable to connect the DE10 Nano to a display. Finally, plug in the power to the DE10 Nano and you're ready to play games if you have the software set up. This is one of the most annoying issues with the DE10 Nano. There is no on or off button. It can only be turned on by plugging it in and turned off by unplugging it. The most convenient way I found to power it is with a smart plug where you can just turn it on and off by talking. You may be asking yourself, why do I need SD RAM? It's only 128 megabytes and the DE10 Nano already has one gigabyte of RAM, which is many times more than 128 megabytes. This is mostly due to latency. 
Latency is the amount of time it will take for the FPGA to do back and forth communication with the RAM. Older consoles depend on exact timings, and the onboard DDR3 RAM doesn't provide the latency needed to properly duplicate those timings. That is why we have SD RAM modules. Also, there can be cores that require two SD RAM modules. This is because these cores need more bandwidth, or else the game can't be properly implemented. Creating a module that's more than 128 megabytes will not help because the issue is bandwidth, not memory capacity. Think about adding the extra RAM module, like adding more lanes in a highway to move more cars at the same time and help traffic congestions between two cities. Increasing city capacity will not help ease traffic between them. But for this minimal setup, just worry about using one RAM module because barely any cores use two. So how much will all this cost you? The total cost will definitely depend on what you already have, but expect to pay around $324. This does not include a keyboard and gamepad and other accessories that you may have, so budget more if you do not have them. Pricing can definitely vary depending on when you see this video too. The most important item is the DE10 Nano, which powers everything. At the time of this video, it costs $225 directly from the manufacturer and you can get it cheaper with an academic discount for $190. So that's how you can build a bare minimum Mr. FPGA setup. You can even use this setup to connect to an old school CRT television through direct video. Check out my video showing you how to do this. Also, my video that goes over the software installation on the SD card covers networking and the copying of games. Having this setup allows you to slowly do your research and see if you need the other add-on boards for more connectivity and cases to house your setup, or if you're fine with just using it like this. There are cases that exist for this minimal setup too. I'll provide links in the description that go over the extras and upgrades you can get for your setup to help you with your research. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.